The world of art and cinema is going to change forever. And let me explain what I mean by that. So OpenAI, which is the company that released ChatGPT, if I got that correct. And yes, this is going to be an AI video, not to hop on the trend, but because I saw it in the news quite recently and I wanted to talk about it, but then also talk about the benefits and the ramifications of such a tool. Uh, with the video that I did last time, which was interesting, like about AI taking your job and all that good stuff. So OpenAI released a tool for private companies at, as of last week, if I'm not mistaken, called Sora. So what it is, it's a text to video generator tool. And so what it does is you take a prompt. It can be as ideally the prompt is descriptive to a point where you can generate a bunch of different themes and ideas from it, input it into the software, and then the software spits out the product, which is a video clip of, let's say like a minute. And what's been kind of captivating the whole AI world, like with the watchdogs and like the people that are the hyping dogs of like, you know, AI in general by Storm is the fact that like, for those of you who haven't played around with a lot of the other AI tools out there, um, there's like, honestly, like so many, it's kind of crazy. Um, well, Midjourney only produces images, but I believe they could also do a couple of videos like up to a couple of seconds, but there's there's a bunch of AI tools out there that already do what Sora does. But here's the critical difference. So from what I've understood, Sora is able to generate video clips of up to a minute with stunning quality and also a tendency to remain true to the prompt. And what I mean by that is with all these other AI tools out there that generate videos from let's say a prompt of text, after like five seconds, the video in some way starts to get like wonky, like the face could distort, the backgrounds could, you know, get really like weird. It just, it starts to kind of fall apart essentially like after five seconds. And don't ask me why, um, I suspect it has something to do with the amount of data that it's like running maybe in the background or maybe like the references that it uses uh, in the background and how it just like maybe falls apart after it uses it all. I'm not an expert, but that's from just what I've understood. And what Sora does is it can produce a full minute of a video, which is crazy w without it even like falling apart, which is something that's completely apparently like unheard of. So let me give you a couple of examples. So if you go on OpenAI, their website, they have a couple of examples of different prompts that they've used to generate like let's say like a minute for like a video clip and so one of them is I, i'm not gonna say like the whole prompt because i first of all i don't remember but second of all it's just you can find the example online but the point is is that it was a, a very long and descriptive prompt of a woman in tokyo wearing fancy clothes going on a walk when it was raining and for anyone that does like 3D rendering with like Blender or like any other software, you know rain is hard as hell to render in real time and then also add like, you know, really cool like motion effects to it. And so it's funny because like I watched the example through a lunch and learn through one of the AI like YouTube channels that I follow and I was frankly shocked at how pseudo realistic but how consistent the quality was for up to like a minute. It, Honestly, it looked like it was a movie trailer. It was that good. Like, I know it's just like, oh, my, you know, more modern CGI is already good enough and stuff. No, like this looked like it was Hollywood or something like that. And then they gave like other different examples as well. Like a woolly mammoth with a, with a herd, like walks through the tundra and stuff like that. And the fur looked <laughs> real. <laughs> it's just, it was crazy. And the final example I'll give is an animation of this cat, it looked like a Pixar cat for, you know what I mean? And like, it was watching a candle melt with the wax dripping on either side. And I was like, are you actually joking? Like that looks like someone went to Disney, hired a 3D animation team of like four or five people and then produced a short. But this was just a tool that used a prompt 
to generate a complete like minute of an animation that almost looks like it was done by Disney. Like, do you know like just how like cool that is, but like also scary. And so we'll go into the ramifications and the benefits obviously that such a tool can bring because eventually OpenAI, like I was reading this morning on LinkedIn, they were worth like $80 billion and it's insane because like OpenAI, has, it's like Pac-Man if you've ever played the game. It like you eat like the, you eat, you eat the dots and then you eat like the fruit which makes the ghosts like <laughs> run away from you and then you try to eat the ghosts. OpenAI is doing that with all these AI startups that you see that are backed by like venture capitalists like Wahoos and stuff like that, you know, Silicon Valley and, and all that stuff. And the more OpenAI assimilates, you know, the bigger that they become and the total stock goes through the roof and all that good stuff. But they're worth 80 billion, I think, the last time I like read that. Feel free to correct me if that's wrong. And this tool has not been released, released to the public yet. It's just to companies for probably like private use or something like that. It's more like testing and stuff like that. So in terms of the benefits, cause that's, that's the more easier one to kind of like nail down. This will it, like, it's impossible to list like all the benefits in like a single like cruddy like YouTube video like this. But, you know, some of the ones that come to mind, for example, are for like content creation. Like if you go through like the technical papers that they also have on their website, apparently this tool can do video editing, which is like crazy because like I've been learning to use like Adobe Effects uh, to like modify like my videos and stuff like that a little bit. Uh, other ones that I produce um, from a very basic level. So there's that. It can create like looped videos for social media. So like in terms of content creation, it's a game changer. Although to a certain extent, because for me personally, as someone that like focuses on international embassy and cultural events from my other creative project, I've tried AI stuff before and I don't really care like how real it looks. It, I don't know, it's like people, people prefer the personal touch, but then at the same time, if it looks so real, this could be an AI thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not, it's not but it just kind of gets to that at the very end. It's like, how do you know what's real if it looks that real to begin with? You know what I mean? So it's just like, in terms of benefits, it can bring, it can bring about the rise, of, and it has already, it can bring about the rise of a whole new job sector with like learning how to not code, but do prompt engineering. So this is one of the points that I picked up from like a lot of the AI lunch and learns that I've been kind of like watching on the side and you don't have to code to like learn these tools because like the tools have like user interfaces that run off prompts and like all that stuff. So if you're not like, for example, me, I'm not a meta scientist. I don't have a background in AI. I don't know anything about coding, even though I kind of like wanted to learn, but like at the same time priorities, right? So it's just like the skill that I've learned or the skill that I've like heard of that's going to make the difference between let's say like you landing a job and like AI or something like that is prompt engineering. So the ability to write a very specific set of prompts that can render what you want with the most effectiveness. So just a tidbit. So that'll like, that's one benefit is like the, the rise of a completely new job sector and like not just in like creative, but like finance, um, engineering, consulting, like there's so many applications, which is truly mind boggling. So in terms of like, you know, getting a new job and like getting a new skill set, like that's a benefit right there. Redefining the content creation field, uh, just as one elementary example is like another big benefit. I mean, honestly, the list goes on, but for the sake of the video, I won't bore you with like all the ones I'll list. Now the ramifications are deeply concerning. So human beings can't have anything nice because, you know, as we all know, it just takes one bad egg to kind of ruin like everything. So before the whole like rise of, you know, like AI and stuff over the past like couple of like um, years, there's been the concern of deep fakes. And so if you haven't been, if you have been living under a rock, uh, a deep fake is basically like, you know, like those like weird video clips of like these like celebrities or like former presidents online. 
Um, and then like their face is like moving and like saying words, but like it's not them. That's basically what a deep fake is. And it begs the question like with all this ethical use of like AI development that's going on, the the concept of a deep fake is getting scary like scary scaringly like very real. Like there are some deep fakes that I've seen that you can tell that they're like fake after like an extended period of time, but at first glance you're like, really? Did Elon Musk just say that? And then you're like, there's no way in hell he said that. <laughs> you know? So it's just like in terms of like ramifications, like OpenAI is going to have to do a lot with like their ethics board when it comes to AI development. And I think that's why they didn't release it to the public yet, because they know that people are going to like use it to, uh, my God, uh, they'll create deep fakes of like, you know, celebrities for scams and like, you know, deep fakes. There, there was also like deep fakes of, um, I can't say it on YouTube, but like, uh, let's say adult entertainment and stuff like that. And then also, the underage stuff, which, Lord, that's just disgusting. It's just that, yeah, it, it's just, it's crazy just how much misuse there potentially is with this tool. And not just this tool, but just AI in general. And that's the whole argument with like developing a strong ethical foundation to make sure that doesn't happen to begin with. But if it's released to the public and anyone can use it, I mean, people will find a way, you, you know. <laughs> You tell people not to do something, they'll find a way to do it. That's just the way that the human psyche like operates. So with ramifications, man, deep fakes for celebrities with crypto scams or something like that. Deep fakes with adult entertainment and potentially ruining people's lives. Another big thing that I've like um, seen nowadays is like ransomware. There's been like a lot of like ransomware attacks over the past like couple of years, especially against like critical infrastructure. So like they can combine that potentially with Sora had to do like some weird, you know, video clip with, you know, a celebrity saying one thing and then it turns out to be a scam, they lock your computer or whatever, and then they can point the blame to somebody else potentially. It's scary, you know? So it's like, in terms of ramifications, if they don't control it, and by they I mean like open AI, and then the way that they limit that is through like stern ethical development, talking to security experts to make sure that the tool is not misused, et cetera, et cetera. The ramifications are very real because like you have this tool, right? Like if you look at the examples on their page, like the Disney one that I referenced, for example, and there's a reason why I said like, you know, a team of an animation specialists and like actors and all that stuff for the examples that I used, they can be put out of a job very quickly especially with like the quality being already good as it is and only going to get better over time. Like, I want you to imagine something, a, a two hour movie, like most of the Hollywood movies that are coming out nowadays, like suck. Like, I mean, that's just my opinion. And to be honest, I don't watch a lot of movies anymore just because of the fact that like most of them are like utter garbage. But just imagine this, people are already producing AI movies on YouTube using six or seven tools, right? From like editing all the way to script development. If you have one tool that can render everything, make a movie by itself, and just do that, and then do like a full movie that's like, let's say like two hours in length and with an actual compelling script that you write yourself or whatever, and you generate that from like a single prompt, that is, crazy because it's already happening right now but at the same time it's not good to that level just yet but it will be because i mean just look just search it up look at look at sora text to video generation tool open ai and you'll see what i mean it, it's actually very fascinating but like also very scary at how good the videos are <laughs> when it when it gets released to the public i'll have to play around with it just a little bit. There'll probably, there'll obviously be a paid version, obviously, you know, like for the full minute or whatever, but just even a couple of seconds to see like, there's many different AI tools out there. You know, Midjourney is an example, but like, I think they're just used for images, but in terms of like video stuff, like all these different AI tools, or Runaway, that's a big one right there. Um, I use them to kind of play around with stuff a little bit, but 
OpenAI is really leading the charge in this whole new world of like AI development. And, you know, like we mentioned before in previous videos, there will be one side that chooses to embrace the tool and say that like it's a great boon to whatever field that you're in. And then there's going to be the other side that says like, oh, AI should be tempered. This is an example of how people are going to be put out of jobs, et cetera, et cetera. It's up to you to choose which side you're on and how you're going to use it for your own future in whatever pathway career wise, or if you're a creator and you want to, you know, eventually develop a sustainable income on the side, it's up to you to decide how you're going to use these tools. Just food for thought.